Welcome back to Parts of Some Parsimony. Just checking, doing my normal morning routine, checking the plants. So these guys I planted mm, earlier this week. Pak choy over there, and we have spinach, some onions down the center here, and then more lettuce and broccoli. But notice this this morning. So that looks like cutworm damage. If you guys have never seen cutworm damage, that's usually what it looks like. But then over on the pak choy right there, Tons of there's lots of bite marks. So it's either a caterpillar or a rabbit or a mouse or something like that. I'm gonna well, guess uh, it's probably a small rodent because it's too early in the year for the caterpillars to be out. So tonight I'm gonna make sure I cover it up. I've let it be uncovered the last two nights because it's been really warm, but we're gonna cover it back up. And as for this plant, it, it, there's nothing you can do about it. This one is gone. Now sometimes you can dig around the soil here and you might actually find the little cutworm. Oh, there he is. Told ya. Well, he'll go visit. He's gonna, he's gonna go have a visit to the chickens and um, he's gonna give me a nice egg for the damage he did. There he is. Don't drop him. He's nasty. That was a very naughty, naughty little cutworm. I should have put cutworm collars, but I didn't think they were gonna be that active this morning or this cool weather. Hey girls, we got a special treat for you. Here you go, lunchtime. Special treat just for you. If you're squeamish about bugs and worms and things like that, the fact is, if we don't control them in a natural way, they're gonna just destroy everything. And not always can you find the worm, but if you check your garden every day and you find that it just ate, it's usually right in that area around the plant. So I always dig for it. I mean, the plant's dead. And if I can find it, I give them to the chickens. It's a win-win situation. So back to our, <laughs> back to what I was doing. My beans here planted these a couple I didn't plant them I got the sticks already a couple weeks ago last night I put in a broccoli over here my peas are just starting to come up um, not great turnout yet but they're coming and then in front of the peas I put a whole row of lettuce so back to the beans here I had the poles put in and today the weather looks like it's gonna be coolish but okay to plant and I am just using the seeds that actually wintered over out here so I didn't even know they were out here but when I put these poles in I found them so I'm gonna plant them and we're gonna see what happens Okay, all planted. We'll see what this week will bring and see if we'll uh, have early beans this year. Another thing I've been seeing swirling around the internet for um, several years now is how you can improve your carrot germination rate by putting a board on top of the carrots after they've been planted. And so we did a test this year. Mary did not use the board. I used a board. We planted them the same day. We watered them the same way. So this is Mary's row here, and she has a row here. And I am not seeing any growth yet. I would think I'd see it in the next day or two, but nothing yet. Over here, I just took some old planks that I found laying around, and <laughs> look at that, these are carrots that have germinated. There's another one. Now they all haven't germinated yet, but we've got some overachievers that <laughs> popped right out. So I guess that is proof that putting something on top of your carrots helps hold, maintain that moisture and helps them to germinate. And a lot of you guys who are in the southern zones, you may, you'll be planting your carrots right now or you've probably already planted them. Try it because it worked really well. I'm gonna give it, you know, another day. We're supposed to get that heavy rain tonight and then I'll pull these up. I don't want the seedlings to get washed away in the amount of rain we're getting, so I'll leave those there. But interesting experiment. Worth noting, use the board if you can. It seems to help. 
done. Art's back at the compost. We actually used all of our finished compost right there in the garden. We really need more compost. So Art is... Yeah, more on the way. This is a nasty job this year. It is. It's yucky and there's it's, a lot of it and it's heavy. And it smells. It's better doing it today though. We're supposed to get over an inch of rain tonight, Art. Yep. Get it flipped and let all that water on it and then we're gonna have a hot pile next week wow we just found <laughs> what is that a, um i think it was a spaghetti squash that went bad you want some uh, no a whole lot of compost interesting the things you find in there yep and some bad news we lost all of the fruit on the trees this year so we had two, the weather was really weird. Didn't it warm up in what, February or March? It was March. It got really warm and the trees just started flop, you know, they didn't flower, but they started budding. And then it got really cold. And that is a recipe for just losing all your buds. So these here would have all been flowers. And watch, when I just touch it, it just falls right off and that means that it died from frost. So this was our peach tree, and yeah, I don't think, maybe we'll get something up near the top, but I don't see any pink flowers. So no peaches this year. Of course this pear, oh, art, 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 oh, wow. flowers. Oh yeah, there's tons there's of a, them. Oh, no, not a, not a ton. Yeah. There's a whole clump. Yay. See? Our first, first flowers forward, right there, right there. And one right there. I can't believe it. We have flowers. I've been looking for them. And Mary found more. Finally. Finally the pears decided to do what they were supposed to. Wow. I'm excited. So we didn't lose all of our fruit. We only lost peaches. And like cherries. We decided we were going to go for a little trip and check out a local source for homemade chicken feed. So usually we use, I think it's um, Purina? Is it by Purina? I think it's Purina chicken feed. Um, but our neighbor used to always do local source for his feed and he recommended it. Well, many years later, we're finally checking it out and seeing if this is a good source for our eggs and how well, if our chickens respond well to it. So we thought we'd bring you guys along. And this is like all country out here. Think. Should we get some guinea hens? Yes! yes. They eat ticks. Sure. Oh, yes. Do you want get some guinea hens? Guinea hens. I don't know if they lay eggs. They must lay hay eggs. I don't know. <laughs> there she is. There's the guinea hen right there. Eating the grass. Eating the grass, eating bugs. The kid said it was stinky. <laughs> A little bit. They haven't been to the farm in a while. Oh, we found a tractor store for Daniel. <laughs> Look at all those tractors. You want to buy one? Yep, I want to buy one of them. Which, you, you want to buy all of them? Yeah. Okay, let's You would need lots, lots of money to buy all of those. Lots of tractors. Hey, some ATVs too. Oh, look at all those yellow and orange ones. It's our last time of picking up John. So today was John's last day of fire class. He was doing his hazmat and he got out early. I know last time I left you, we were in the car. We were at the farm getting animal feed. We went to our investment property. We did some work and then we got the phone call. So now 
<laughs> now we're here picking up John. 